Divine Healing of Mind and Body, Talk 13. You are the branch on the vine that bears my fruit. My love, my peace I bring to you. See the life of God as the Christ consciousness in you. I am the life is then realized. Life is consciousness. It is God who is expressing himself. There can be no other. The Christ is the only begotten Son of the Father. The great man is the Christ who rules the world in which everything exists. This Christ man also exists in every individual, and there is no separation anywhere. If you can realize this, then you will see how wonderful it is to understand the wholeness of reality, where there is no separation, no distinction. The growth of the divine seed is manifesting in you. The hidden work is going on. Wait patiently, and as the fruit in season cometh, so shall the Christ in you blossom forth as the fruit of God, the finished product. There is a continual work going on within each of you, even if you do not realize it. The great truth is, there is no standing still. There is movement everywhere, continuously and upward, in the whole of humanity. This is the Christ working in you. Yes, in answer to your question, when these talks with you are complete, they will be printed, so that the world can have them also. Spiritual forces are now being used for the purpose of bringing higher knowledge and wisdom to the world as they did thousands of years ago. It is in the mind of man where we find separation and distinction, but the Christ, the Spirit of God, remains the same always and is the seed that is forcing its way through the darkness of the human mind. The earth is the substance surrounding the seed of the plant. So is humanity, the substance surrounding the Spirit of God. Mankind is growing to maturity and will become conscious of the indwelling Spirit as the only reality. The best way to help this great work is to close the door of the senses, for when thine eye is single, thy whole body will be full of light. It is the inner vision that sees this mighty power unfolding its beauty and intelligence, which is omnipresent expressing itself wholly and not separate from the whole, but the whole expressing itself in the many and the many existing in the whole. There is no separation anywhere. Please, please remember this. This must take root in your mind. It is the pillars upon which the rock of truth stands. The consciousness of God envelops everything, and everything is within his consciousness so his consciousness in you will reveal his image and likeness. Listen to the beat of your heart and realize the full stream of the life of God pulsating through it. In reality, you are one with the heart of Christ in the Father. God rejoices to pour himself out through the channels he has prepared for this purpose. You are the channels he is preparing and soon you will feel the urge. That I have come to you is no mere chance, but as the unfoldment of the Spirit which underlies the whole of humanity. The call never goes unanswered. It is the great crusade of the Christ that dwells in you that is forcing its way into your consciousness. The inner shall be expressed in the outer, and the outer shall become the inner. Then man is matured by the Spirit of Christ. The world shall know him as he lives the life and the Lamb and the Lion shall lie down together. The Lamb of God is the great power within man. The Lion is the man of the senses, unruly, not knowing himself, but he is subdued by the Lamb of God, the Christ within. Love overcomes all things. Love is God, and God is love. This pulsating light delights itself in you when you delight yourself in it. God is omnipresent and eternal, and you are with him. To become like him, you must know that there can be no separation, no distinction. Perhaps you do not quite comprehend what I mean when I say, no separation, no distinction. When you see distinction, you are living in separation. 
you are living in the personality of the senses. It is when you are living in separation that you see distinction. And seeing distinction, you feel separation, and this is the great illusion. Distinction is a product of the mind. But you will note that there is no distinction in the Christ of God. There is no distinction in the Spirit of God in you. In each and every one of you, there is the same Spirit. In that Spirit, you have power, for nothing can assail it. Become aware of it now in your lives and be free. This is the freedom of truth, the truth that sets you free. Only in your belief in separation do you have distinction, and so you feel separation. Thus you must discern all the cause separation before you can know me. Open your eyes and see God everywhere. This conscience of God is spreading all over the earth as each one feels himself or herself one with the one heart pulsating with love. In the heart of God there is everlasting love, and the Christ is one with the heart of God, and this Christ is the Savior of the race. There is but one Christ in the creation of the world, and everything exists by him, and nothing that ever was made could have been made without him, and by him you came into being. This is the Son, the only begotten Son of God, the one Christ the great divine man in whom you all move and have your being, and he moves in each and every one of you. This divine Christ is the conscious expression of the Father. He is conscious of all things, conscious of the power to create, conscious of all things existing in the world, conscious of himself in each and every individual, and there is no separation in him. Think then of this one holy divine man existing in each and every one of you. He is male and female completing himself. Before you can know him, you must rid yourself of false beliefs and separation, beliefs that breed hatred, beliefs that have no foundation in me. You can have no separate beliefs when you realize the truth of the one eternal living spirit that is manifesting now in you and in me. Can you now follow any belief that separates you from your brothers and sisters? Do not cling too hard to the earthly life, for it is but a preparatory step in the growth of the Christ in you. Many are holding too strongly to the earthly life and the things that exist in it. Use these things wisely, but do not cling to them, and do not allow them to cling to you. They are for your use, to prepare you for further unfoldment, to greater strength, power, and glory. Be not afraid, you lose nothing that is real. Christ is your only reality and is the eternal Son of God. No one is ever lost. It is the expression of God and pours through the garments that shroud it. When you begin to realize this, all of earth will know that it is the love of God that is expressing itself through the soul. The body is the garment through which the life is expressed in the physical. You must not despise this garment, but consecrate it to the Christ, realizing the mighty power that is within. And as you consecrate this garment to the Christ, so shall it become as the inner, and the inner becomes the outer. Thus ye are born again, this time not of the flesh nor of the will of man, but of the Spirit of God. For I have said, Call no man your father on earth, for one is your father who is in heaven. Rejoice and have no fear. Fear is but the dimmed sight that prevents you from seeing clearly. It clouds your spiritual vision, yet only for a time. For freedom comes through the eternal Christ in you. All fear is dispelled by love, for love casteth out fear. The fear of evil, the fear of man, the fear of God, all are products of the material sense and have no foundation in reality. The love of God sets you free from all these fears that separate you from His divine presence. Therefore fear neither man nor beast, neither must you fear God, but love Him. When this true nature of the Christ is revealed in your own consciousness, there is the power that Daniel had in the den of lions. This power is yours also. 
Nothing on earth or in the heavens can overcome you. In the recognition of the fact that this Christ, the Spirit of God in you, is all power in itself and is the creative principle behind all things existing in heaven and on earth. And when you realize this, you will not be afraid. The lowest are seeking God in some way or another. As my disciple, it is your work to show them the true path through love and by example. Not by mere words, but by kindness, by love, by understanding. Most people fear the experience called death. But when you pass through this experience, you find yourself to be a living, breathing soul more alive than ever before. For it is the soul that breathes and not the body. Death is but the gateway to the greater expansion of the Christ, the flower that grows and blooms in God. And when you find yourself living, breathing souls, more alive than ever before, it overwhelms you. The one wishes that you want to return to your loved ones to tell them of the wonderful truth of the glory that you have found. Many have returned to you, but your ears are deaf and your eyes are blind. All must pass through the same experience, and this is the joy of those who have already passed through the experience called death. This joy which all will experience is beyond the understanding of mortal sense. You become more conscious of the freedom of life because the soul breathes beyond the flesh. The body is the temple of the spirit. Spirit life is eternal. You find that all you thought true becomes a reality. In your mind you have pictured the experience of seeing loved ones again and of knowing them face to face. This I truly tell you is real. Even those who injured you and those you also injured through ignorance will rejoice at meeting you again. This is the eternal law of the Spirit, the unfoldment of the Christ. As the consciousness becomes aware of this inner life, a change takes place in the consciousness and all these hatreds disappear. Then it is wise for you to understand this while on earth. Some born in ignorance die in ignorance. Now this shall not be your fate. The mist dissolves away and there remains the beauty of the Christ of God. When I talk of the Christ of God, I know that you are beginning to understand what the Christ means. It is the great divine man of God. Christ is the divine man on earth, which includes all human souls. All cells exist in the one body, so does each one of you exist in the Christ of God. The seed of God is in you and it is sure to grow to maturity. No greater joy can ever be experienced than when that which you vaguely thought true becomes a reality. You find that you have lost nothing but all is gained with a new understanding. You will be overwhelmed by the unlimited sense that takes hold of you while all the false beliefs will drop from you. You will be the same living soul no matter in which way you leave your body. You are still you. And in all those you loved, you will find a greater love and a greater attraction, a greater understanding for nothing in love is lost. Did I not show my hands and feet to my disciples? I was the same they knew on earth. Yet I knew that I was the Christ of God. And it is for every one of you also to realize this truth, for through the realization of it comes awareness, a conscious awareness that ignorance cannot destroy. Ignorance clouds the reality in you. Most people are slow to learn because of false beliefs. Then forget all error and ignorance and enter fully into the truth of your being now. Can you fully enter into this now? You are living beings. It is the life of God that lives in you as a living being. You exist in God and not outside Him. When this is understood, there is an expansion of the consciousness, an awareness of reality, an awareness of an eternal reality that exists, having no end. Oh, would you know this, it would set you free now. Even my disciples did not understand fully until I reappeared to them. The eternal Christ of God liveth forever, yet they could not quite understand. They were just people like yourselves, but through the Spirit of the Christ they became my apostles. 
Even now I know that many of you here do not fully understand that it is I who speak to you. Neither did Thomas believe. He too wanted to see my hands and feet and thrust his hand under my side before he would believe. It was eight days afterward when all my disciples gathered together and Thomas was with them. I took his hand and put it into my side and showed my hands and feet. Thomas was overcome and exclaimed, My Lord, my God. He was overwhelmed with the realization that, after the experience called death, one still lived. And in this is the secret of power and all, yet few could really understand it. In the realization of this dwells the power of the Christ in you. That is why I made it the greatest point in my work. It shows that this world is but a preparatory step in the unfoldment of the Christ within. This realization is what you also require. Then all power will be given unto you in heaven and on earth. Thomas believed because he had seen. But I say, blessed are those who have not seen me and have believed that into which God has breathed the breath of his life can never be dead. Only the dead who believe in death bury their dead. The living Christ does not die. If you could turn your eyes inward and see what I am looking at now through these eyes, you would gain a greater understanding. Yes, your eyes will see and your ears will hear with a new understanding of the living Christ of God. Those who are weary and tired will rest as they have never rested before. Those who suffered while on earth and have passed through the gate of their Gethsemane, some aged perhaps and infirm, with a memory of their condition while on earth, will find that it is just an image in the mind that requires discarding. Nevertheless, the soul is scarred for the time being. They pass into a deep slumber. The soul sleeps, then wakens in the reality of the Christ. They are rejuvenated and freed from all conditions that scarred the memory. Yet, if they liked, they could reproduce a condition to show those on earth who they were. But immediately they return into the inner. They discard these conditions and live in the realization of the Christ, the perfection of God. It is sometimes hard to make these living on earth believe the truth that the everlasting Christ, which dwells in each and every one of them, is the Father himself then those who are weary and tired will rest as they have never rested before. And when they awaken, they will find that the best and the highest that could ever be realized is true. Your loved ones are not afar off, but present with you, as they have always been since they left you. But your material sense blinds you to their presence. Oh, how you will try to help those you have loved and left behind. Yet all of this is in store for all. This is the great relief that you feel. Yet it pains you to see how ignorant the world is about the reality of life. My words will bring to your consciousness the realization of the truth of reality, that you are also eternal because you live in reality. You live and move and have your being in Him who created you, and He lives in you. You will then begin your further unfoldment, which is never ceasing. With it a greater understanding of God, a greater love of God, a greater realization of His wonderful universe in which you live and move and have your being. If I could imprint in your mind now all that exists, you would be free of all fear and doubt. The greatest thing of all is love. Love that has no beginning and no ending. It is ever pouring itself out, and as you are caught up in its opulence, so do you love as the Christ of God that has risen. The Father unfolds in you his love, and the Christ is this love in you. I long for you to know of this indwelling Christ in you, so that you can understand that there is no separation between us. In my Father's house there are many mansions. These are the varying degrees of consciousness. As consciousness unfolds, so does it manifest that which it unfolds. As unfoldment takes place through the consciousness, it manifests what it unfolds. What is realized is seen and understood. Your consciousness is the means through which the Christ of God manifests, unfolding the greater beyond. 
The Christ of God is incarnate and dwells within, nearer than hands and feet, and can hear even before you ask. When you ask in faith, understanding that the place of creation is in you, there is nothing that the Father will not do for you if you ask Him in my name. Then ask in the name of the Christ of God that is within you. I will hear you, and what you ask will be done unto you. For you are the branches on the vine that bears my fruit, yes, capable of abundant fruit. With me you can do all things, without me you can do nothing. I of myself am nothing. It is the Spirit of the Father within me that speaketh. He doeth all these things and more. I am behind all thought and speech, and am omnipresent, and my love is the key to all knowledge, wisdom, and power. My love unfolds your consciousness in the inner realm, and as love unfolds in you, so do you know more of me. Even if you speak with eloquence and have not love in your heart, you are but a tinkling symbol. Even if you acquire all knowledge and practice of faith that can do all things, yet without love in your heart, what you do does not profit you. Should you give alms to the less fortunate and feed the poor, yet without love, you have done nothing. Love is not understood. It is kind and suffers injustice without rebuke. Love does not return evil for evil, but good for evil. In the meek, love guides them in good judgment. Love is all power, yet is humble. Love does not make vain displays, nor does it boast of its accomplishments. Love never fails, because love is God, and God is love. The divine stream of love flows into your heart when your heart beats with the heart of love. Peace comes into your mind, and your soul radiates the true nature of our Father in heaven. I enjoy speaking to my Father who is love. His love casteth out all fear. No harm can come nigh you with His love in your heart. Be at peace then, and know that I am with you. Love is always in the midst and dwells in the kindly darkness that surrounds you. Be not afraid of this darkness, for I am the light that overcometh the darkness. Yet the darkness does not comprehend the light, for the light alone comprehendeth. The darkness is but a shadow in the mind, yet through it and by the Christ blooms into power and glory. Become aware of this power and all conditions will pass from you. Shrink not from responsibility for any task, even if it be a cross. You will find joy in the unfoldment by overcoming, because you will know you are the light of the world that overcometh the darkness. It is the light that comprehendeth. The darkness comprehendeth not. Where the light is, darkness disappears. The soul that seeks nourishment from the Christ within becomes strong. It is the house that is built upon the rock of truth that nothing can assail from without. Seek my silent love that dwells within you. Love all, bless all with love, and I shall bless you a hundredfold. For I delight in you when you bless with love. I am working in you when you love. And when you bless with love, I am by your side, for I am love. Do not seek gain or reward for your love, nor make show of your love before men, but love in secret. Do all things that come to thy hand for the love of God, not to please men. You are the future, the past, and the present. Learn this at once, so I can work in you now. Then all which is unreal will be swept into the abyss where it belongs. You are all just where you ought to be to do this work, and God cannot fail when you are alive with Christ. For you are the branch on the vine that bears my fruit. Now we will enter into the sanctuary. My peace, my love, I leave with you to remain with you. Amen.